We came to Columbus, Ohio to find our landmarks, to recover our sense of place and our sense of ourselves. We came to Columbus because it seemed so normal, so typical, so ordinary, so much in the middle, sort of midway from anywhere to middle town. Experts are commonly used in documentaries to bring a sense of authority and credibility to a program, but it is important to recognize that expertise is constructed visually. There are implicit conventions that dictate who the experts are and what they look like. It's a commonly held misconception that the Earth is a spherical object that revolves around the Sun. But the fact is, of course, that the Earth is a circular dish surrounded by a barrier of ice that explorers like Andrea Barnes have been attempting to penetrate for centuries. The argument, for all practical purposes, came to an end when the Church of England was established by law during the 16th century. They rejected many laws of the ancient Catholic Church and, to appear forward-thinking, they embraced many radical scientific notions prevalent at the time, including Copernicus' round earth theory. With this endorsement, the theory found its way into the schools, which were then largely controlled by the Church. It has remained there to this day, and many children have accepted it without question. Andrea Barnes was not one of those children. Born into an Ontario farming family in 1898, Andrea was a bright child who spent much of her time learning about the world around her. She was inquisitive and precocious, and much to her teacher's dismay, she fervently believed the global Earth concept was nonsensical and easily refuted. Many scientists agree with her and are amassing evidence to carry on her work. There's uh, all kinds of proofs right around you that uh, show that the Earth is flat. A very simple one to think of is that uh, we use plumb bobs to uh, build buildings. In other words, to get the wall of a building going straight down, you'll take a string with a heavy weight hanging from it, and you'll make the building follow that string. That plumb bob will point to the center of a round earth. That means that uh, if you imagine that this, this was the correct earth, you can imagine a plumb bob held here would point in that direction, and a plumb bob held here would point in that direction. That means the buildings would be bigger on the top than at the bottom. It would also mean that boats would constantly be sailing downhill. And invariably, in any discussion about the shape of the Earth, the first argument used in support of its rotundity is that as ships sail out to sea, the tops of their masts are visible longer than the hull. The fact is, of course, that the light rays from the lower part of the ship are no longer reaching the shore. When we consider that so eminent an authority as Einstein postulated and indeed proved, that light rays bend perceptibly in gravitational fields, it should not be surprising that the light rays from the lower parts of the ship do not succeed in reaching the shore, are incapable of entering the eye of an observer, and so the particular part of the ship from which those light rays come is not seen. Perhaps the most significant experiments were those carried out on a canal known as the Old Bedford Level. Located in Cambridgeshire, England, the canal is perfectly straight over an uninterrupted six-mile stretch. While there, Parallax conducted many experiments, all towards one conclusion, to prove that the surface of the water in the canal was indeed perfectly flat. In one experiment, a boat carrying a flag rode from one bridge to another six miles away. An observer with a telescope placed eight inches above the surface of the water found that the flag and the boat were distinctly visible throughout the entire distance. If the Earth is a sphere with a circumference of 25,000 miles, 
then over a distance of six miles, the second bridge should mathematically be 16 feet below the observer's eye line. But in spite of the mathematical evidence, any further attempts to restore belief in the flat Earth seem doomed by one of the supposed great moments in modern scientific achievement. After thousands of years of uncertainty, man was able to get far enough away from the Earth to have a good look at it in all its resplendent beauty. It did appear curved, and photographs were brought back for all to see. However, according to experts, these photographs are much less conclusive than one might think. Einstein told us that light actually is attracted by gravity. In other words, the path of light is not straight in a strong gravitational field. So. Uh, astronauts looking at the Earth uh, see a curved Earth, but what they don't realize is, is that it's not the Earth that's curved, it's the light taking a curved path from the Earth because of the strong gravitational field of the Earth that makes the Earth look curved. So you're saying that those photographs from space that the Apollo mission brought back don't represent the Earth as it really is? Of course they represent the Earth as it really is, as seen by curved light. And so uh, I've, those photographs in space are entirely correct. And uh, it's just that uh, what has to be taken into account when we take data from those photographs is that uh, light traveling through space is curved by gravity. And so it'll make straight things appear curved. And you know, it'll also make curved things appear straight. So you have to be very careful when you use light to measure things in a, in a very high gravitational field. Through time-lapse photography, the velocity of these clouds has been dramatically increased. While they were actually drifting over the mountains at approximately 27 miles per hour, they now have the appearance of moving at well over 100, four times their normal speed. If the clouds were stationary and the Earth was revolving underneath them, this is how it would appear if the Earth was spinning at 100 miles per hour yet we're told that the Earth is spinning at 10 times that speed. Consider this. Those who maintain that the Earth is a globe that spins suggest that people standing at the equator are being whirled around at approximately 1,000 miles an hour. They further maintain that the Earth is spinning around the Sun at a speed of 67,000 miles per hour, and that our Sun is supposedly racing around the center of our galaxy at some 600,000 miles per hour. And yet, you and I both know that on many days it's possible to stand outside without a single hair being messed up by the breeze. You put your hand outside a, a window of a, of a car, which is going even at 80 kilometers per hour, a terrific wind goes blasting by and pushes your hand back. Imagine putting your hand outside the window of a car that's going 1,600 kilometers per hour. You just take your hand right off. <laughs> 